All right, so I just purchased my latest project and it's this Avon Adventure 620 20 foot rigid inflatable boat. And I found this down in New Jersey. It was on Facebook Marketplace and it was literally the only rigid inflatable boat that I could find in the tri-state area that was uh, at least somewhat in my budget. And I went down on a Sunday and immediately bought it. The trailer had some problems with the lights not working, but I had everything I needed in my Land Rover to get the lights working, hooked it up, drove it back. So when I got home, I immediately started making a list of everything that I want to revamp on the boat. And just to preface this project, to me, this boat is the same thing as my Defender. It's just a, a means to get out and see remote places that I wouldn't be able to visit otherwise. And really the, the philosophy behind these trips is exactly the same. And with this boat, I, I really want to be able to see the places that I've read so much about in the history books of the early discovery of the new world. I wanna see the coastlines that the very early explorer saw. And to do that, I need a boat like that. So last summer, I did a project where I took a small jet boat up the Housatonic River and documented the settlement of the Housatonic Valley region uh, and sought out many LIDAR anomalies along the way that helped tell these stories. So now I'd like to apply that same concept to this Avon and take it out and use it as a tool for finding LIDAR anomalies. So with that said, I did make a list of everything that I wanna do to the boat to get it ready for a summer of trips. I literally got my boating license in the summer of 2021, so I don't have very much experience um, and certainly not with big boats like this. O over the last year, I've only been using small inflatable boats. This is a little bit outside my comfort zones. So I did read the Coast Guard book and took all the tests in it and stuff like that. So overlanding and boating does have a lot of similarities. And even the parts that I have in stock that I use on the vehicles are meant for marine applications like for example blue sea systems i use a lot of their products in the actual vehicles and now i actually get to use them in the capacity that they were designed for on the boats so the first step is going to be to completely revamp the trailer so i am going to add a new brake master cylinder i'm going to i got to replace this spare tire the calipers and rotors need to be replaced and all the brake lines uh, we did well to crack in the frame um, that was pretty bad. Any rusty hardware will need to be replaced like this. And of course it'll be, it'll need to be completely rewired. So once I get the trailer revamped, I'm gonna start on just baselining the mechanical side of the boat. So this Honda has about 250 hours on it. The impeller has already been done and the lower unit oil has been changed, but I'm gonna change the engine oil on it, replace the spark plugs, the fuel filters have already been replaced, so I'll leave those alone, but I'll buy some some spares. So once the outboard is, is baselined, I'm going to actually revamp all of the electrics on the entire boat. So I'm gonna gut the wiring in the steering console. All of it is kind of hacked, and I'm just gonna start completely over. I'm going to move the battery under the steering console, and I'm gonna have dual batteries. I always use Odyssey batteries in all of my vehicles. So I'll install two Odyssey performance batteries that are the right size for the Honda. One will be the starting battery and one will be the house battery, kind of like we do in the Land Rovers. I'll use a Blue Sea Systems battery selector switch. Uh, I'm gonna have to extend the battery cables from the outboard to the steering console. So I'll use the correct marine type battery cable, not what we use on the Land Rovers. I'll use a Blue Sea Systems fuse box uh, and Blue Sea Systems bus bar pretty much everything Blue Sea Systems, uh, 12 volt outlets, switches. I'm gonna put some hatches on the uh, steering console here and get rid of that piece of plastic there. I'm gonna get rid of the stereo out of there and use that space for something else. I will actually replace some of the components for the Honda. I'll, I'll replace the warning lights because uh, there's one that's damaged and uh, I think the tachometer is not working. I'll replace that. So the other important thing is I'm going to install a chart plotter and a radio, a GMRS radio with AIS, which is a, a really great system that basically will identify your boat to other boats that have AIS. So I'm going to install a T-top on the boat 
to provide some shade and also a spot to mount the uh, GMRS eight foot antenna and the anchor light and maybe the radar. And I'm gonna install a uh, chart plotter right on the center console here and possibly the radio underneath uh, in there with a, um, a special Garmin um, mic that has all the controls on it. So I only have to have the, the mic external. When I put the T-top on, I'll remove this bar because the T-top will have grab handles and I'll probably put a piece of plexiglass on the front of the T-top to act as a windshield. And of course I'll top it all off with a new Ritchie compass. So once I baseline the electrical system and add some reserve capacity uh, with the extra Odyssey performance battery, then I'm going to actually address the fuel uh, system. So right now it only has one 24 gallon top side mounted uh, gas tank. And I know from jet boating that that will not even be close to enough gas. Um, we, we thought we were gonna run out of gas again. All right, we just got gas and we should be able to make it back. Our main problem now is that we're, we don't have enough gas to get back. We have <laughs> six teaspoons of gas. Not gonna happen with this. So I'm gonna install a second or maybe third gas tank. I think 50 gallons would be really good, but 75 would be better. And I'll install the same exact Muller gas tank uh, just in front of it. I'll remove this seat and I'm gonna get rid of obviously this plastic uh, here and install some normal uh, neoprene pads underneath with aluminum hold down clamps. And then I'll put some uh, normal ball valves on the fuel pickup on each tank. So couldn't be simpler to select the tank. I'll just shut off the one I don't wanna use. I'll run it right to the fuel filter here. And of course I'll neaten up all of the, the fuel lines and actually replace all of the rubber fuel lines and hose clamps. So the other thing I'm gonna do is replace the bilge pump that is uh, definitely seen better days. I'll use the same type, that rule mate type, but I will add a switch um, that will be a bilge pump override. So my switches will basically be the navigation lights, the anchor light, the horn, the bilge pump override, and I think that's it. So up front, I'll need to add a cleat for an anchor and I'll add some loops back here for transom tie downs. And oh, and of course, a, um, I'll add a transducer for the depth finder for the, uh, on the chart plotter. I'm beginning to order all the parts I need for this boat build. And a lot of it is slowly coming in, but I'll wait till I have everything in stock before I start the build. So I really don't know too much about boats, but I feel like my approach is a very proven approach that works with land-based vehicles. So it should work with boats and uh, the last thing that I'll do that I know from experience with vehicles is uh, extensive spare parts kits, an extensive tool kit, and extensive repair supplies. That will make up a uh, like a Pelican 1550 with tools in it and a Pelican 1550 with spares in it. So I'll be sure to post some progress videos on the work that I do on the boat to get it out on the water and start doing trips.